Think Sega, think Sonic. It's like one of those psychology word association tests. In fact, I often feel that all Sega seem to make these days are games with Yakuza or Sonic somewhere in the title. My greatest fear is that one day they'll just decide to make a crossover Sonic Yakuza title. Don't do that. It's about as good an idea as remaking the Back to the Future trilogy, which would be the worst idea ever. However, there was a time in history when Sega not only made a wide variety of innovative and fun titles, but also some of the consoles that provided some of my favourite gaming memories. The Master System, Mega Drive, Game Gear, and, of course, who could forget the Dreamcast. Hello everyone, I'm Roy McCoy, and this time I'm asking what happened to Jet Set Radio. Initially released as Jet Grind Radio in North America, these much-loved games upped and vanished around 19 years ago, and really should have had a new entry by now. The first game landed on Dreamcast in the year 2000, a magical time when not only were people celebrating surviving the Millennium Bug, an event where everyone predicted planes would fall out the sky, computers would explode, and entire networks would self-destruct in an event that people thought would mirror Skynet's rise to power in Terminator. No, no. It was also a year in which we got some amazing games such as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, Perfect Dark, and The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. It was a time when the N64 and Sega's Dreamcast were still a thing. In short, an amazing time. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button as it really does help the video. And let me know in the comments which is your favourite Sega franchise. There are far too many of their titles that have just disappeared. Now, without further ado, let's crack on. Our story begins in the middle of the year 1999 when programming began on what would become the first Jet Set Radio title. Developed by Smilebit, a now defunct studio which ended up being merged into a larger Sega studio for financial reasons in 2004, the studio were formed from members of Team Andromeda, who had worked on the Panzer Dragoon games for the Sega Saturn. The Smilebit development team were a small and young group with an average age of under 25 and consisted of less than 25 developers. Jet Set Radio is one of the most stylish games I have ever played. It looks amazing. Directed by Masayoshi Kikuchi, his first time ever directing a project which, of course, caused some initial hiccups, the game was initially planned to be a skateboarding game, but somewhere down the line turned into a rollerblading title. In terms of style, the lead designer was Kazuki Hosokawa, and the art was done by Ryuta Ueda. Now, I'm going to talk about the art first, as apparently the visual style was decided upon before the gameplay. Going back to that word association game of Sega Sonic, that blue speedy character that was oh so afraid of the water was the reason Ueda had joined Sega. Seeing the international appeal and freshness of that much-loved mammal was a massive pull. However, he was also disappointed with the number of manga and anime star designs. Ueda wanted to create something new, cool, edgy. And in the making of this project, he referenced things like Parappa the Rapper and Fight Club as influencers, rather than the typical sci-fi or fantasy tropes that the team had drawn on for titles like Panzer Dragoon Saga. The first step in making the game stand out was by making things in the game stand out. For example, using thicker lines for objects they wanted to be more noticeable. I mentioned that the style of this game is something that I love. Smilebit actually developed a new cell shading technique not used at the time to give the game its distinctive look. And it's not just the characters that look amazing, the locations were superb. Jet Set Radio is one of the earliest games to feature a 3D open world based on Tokyo shopping districts like Shibuya and Shinjuku, while they added some new environments based on NYC to their international versions. The locations are all vivid and vibrant, and continuing with that theme of art, this game is also heavily focused on graffiti. And of course, it was important to get this right. 
which meant that they brought on artists such as Eric Hayes to design it. So why is this game so special? Well, not only did it become a cult classic, but it became a reference point and influence for other titles such as Sunset Overdrive, another game that I sadly made a video about asking what happened to it. I'll link it in the description. And to be honest, looking at Jet Set Radio and comparing it with Sunset Overdrive, you can see how it became such an influence. The movement and style, that grinding mechanic which enabled players to enjoy speed without worrying about colliding with obstacles is something that clearly influenced Insomniac with their title. And when Jet Set Radio first came out, I fell in love. I mean, who doesn't want to play as a member of a gang of graffiti tagging inline skaters? Who doesn't want to create their own graffiti tags in an editor? You're telling me tagging areas, dodging the authorities, or tagging rivals in street mode doesn't sound like an awesome time. Tag race is not your thing? This was just another example of a fast-paced, fun game, and it had a good plot to boot. Jet Set Radio launched in Japan in June 2000. It then came to North America in October 2000, but, but not under the name Jet Set Radio, instead initially releasing under the name Jet Grind Radio due to trademark problems for Jet Set in the US at the time. And as always, we got it last in Europe in November. However, we did get it as Jet Set Radio. Jet Set Radio, of course, received lots of compliments for its game, Play, visual style and music. IGN in fact said it has the type of look that makes non-gamers can't help but be impressed and I totally agree. I mean just look at it, tell me that this is not stunning, tell me that you could not show this gameplay and footage to anyone, be it a gamer or not, and they wouldn't be intrigued. However that's enough of my personal moment and if you check on Metacritic you have to look under the name Jet Grind Radio to find the original 2000 version. The Metacritic score is a whopping 94 with a slightly lower user score of 8.2. In fact this is one of those games that Metacritic say you must play. In short it's brilliant. Another interesting thing to talk about the launch was the marketing Sega of America used when promoting the North American release. Why? Well, they launched a competition called Graffiti is Art, in which five finalist artists could battle it out, graffiti and canvases for a prize of $5,000 in a finals held in San Francisco. This didn't sit well with Willie Brown, the mayor of the time, who tried and failed to revoke their permit to hold the competition. And what else for Jet Set Radio? Well, this award-winning game even scooped the best console game at the E3 Critics Award in 2000. In short, this was recognized and sold well. Sadly, when this game was released in HD, it didn't review as well. At the time of making this video, the Metacritic score for the Jet Set Radio re-release on PS3 is just 75, much much lower than the original Meta score, and the user score is 7.2. However, Jet Set Radio, when considering all its versions, such as the HD version and the original, sold 1 million copies. Not bad Jet Set, not bad. And when games sell well and well, we get a sequel. And in 2002, we got Jet Set Radio Future, developed once more by Smilebit and published by Sega for the Xbox. Oh, I still remember the day Sega announced it would stop making consoles and focus on games. I understand the decision, but oh, it was just like a piece of my childhood. My, my Mega Drive, my Master System, my Game Gear was just lost. And it still really saddens me to think that we might never get another Sega console. So the second Jet Set Radio game, Jet Set Radio Future, came to the Xbox. The band was back together working on the sequel. Basically most of the original designers and creative leads were back on the project. And it was an Xbox exclusive which hit Japan on the 22nd of February 2002. Four days later it arrived in North America and Jet Set Radio Future arrived in Europe on March the 14th 2002 as a launch game for the Xbox. Once again, players control members of a graffiti inline skating street gang ragging it around the futuristic Tokyo. A cel shaded style of animation returned. The order of the day was grind on rails, ride on walls, mid-air tricks and boosting. But this time, unlike its predecessor, no time limits and stages in the level were now interconnected. Jet Set Radio Future's story also takes place in another timeline. So how was it received? Well, Jet Set Radio Future received pretty favourable reviews, but sadly not as great as the original. At the time of making this video, Jet Set Radio Future has a lower than the original meta score of 88, but a slightly higher user score of 8.3. It also sold relatively well. And what came next? Nothing. That was it. After Jet Set Radio Future in 2002, it was gone. For 19 years, people have been waiting for a sequel. So, could we ever get another one? Well, over the years, there have been some movements. 
In 2006, Kuju Entertainment presented Sega with a concept for a new Jet Set radio game for the Nintendo Wii, but Sega just wasn't interested in developing new games in the series. In short, Sega said no. Probably the most famous example of a pitch was in 2017. Jet Set Radio Evolution was proposed, and you can see the concept footage above. This was the work of Dinosaur Games. They created a visual proof of concept after Sony expressed an interest in their work at GDC 2017. Just a week after that expression of interest, they came back with some concept footage, what you're looking at now. But in the end, it was turned down by Sega for largely unstated reasons. I mean, look at it. It's stunning. So what it sounds like is in these two examples, Sega just said no. And it is wise to assume that there were more attempts to resurrect the franchise that we don't know about. Of course, we did in the end get a remaster of the first game in 2012 that wasn't as well received. We also don't have a re-release or HD remaster of Jet Set Radio Future, with the rumour being that copyright issues with the soundtrack just blocked it from being made. But nothing really. And of course, I'm building up to that question, could we ever see another one? But what about the team? Well, over the years, several of them have pointed out that they would love to make a sequel, they're very much on board. But in mid-2020, Jet Set Radio lead designer Kazuki Hosokawa told US Gamer that he and his team were too old and experienced to create a Jet Set Radio game with the same energy as the original. So it looks like even the original team have moved on, they don't show any interest in making a sequel. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't see another, right? Well, why didn't we see another? Of course, in 2004, Sega went through a massive restructuring due to financial reasons. Many of the studios, like Smilebit, were consolidated into larger studios. And it could just be assumed that these more individual games just got lost and forgotten along the way. It's also possible that Sega don't think that the franchise has anything left to offer. Something I massively disagree with, and I know that a lot of fans of the series, people who are watching this video, also argue against. Maybe it's just that Sega don't want to put the money into the unknown. Whatever the reason is, the question that needs to be asked is, could we ever see another one? As we've heard towards the end of this video, develops like Kuju Entertainment and Dinosaur Games have tried, but it seems at the moment that Sega aren't listening, and they are the rights holders. And while it's possible that Sega will change their mind, at the moment I just can't see it. I mean, even when Sony showed an interest in Jet Set Radio Evolution, Sega still said no. So honestly, could we see another? Oh, I'm gonna reluctantly say no. They rejected it in 2017. This is a series that hasn't been seen for 19 years. One that fans still want, but it appears that it's one that Sega isn't interested in at the moment. I really, really am desperate to be wrong about that, but I just can't see it. However, if the fans keep clamoring after it and developers keep putting forward ideas, eventually, eventually, Sega may change their mind. But sadly, I can't see it for a long time yet. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think we'll see another one? Do you think this series deserves to come back or not? Do you think it should just be left as one of those great games in history? All this video leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching, and this is Roy McCoy, out.